Welcome to Boca Soul, featuring Calypso. Brought to you by the Calypso Shah Spiritual Center in Boca Raton. Specializing in past lives readings, astrology, plus energy healing, event planning, and more. Calypso Spiritual Center, where you discover the beauty of your soul. Call 561 808 9180 to make your appointment. And now, here's today's Boca Soul. Hello, everybody. This is Boca Soul Radio Show, where you discover the beauty of your soul. This show is happening thanks to Calypso Shah Spiritual Center. Uh, the people that are, are uh, streaming our show on our website, bocasoulcenter.com can see our beautiful background. We're here on top of a lake in beautiful South Boca Raton. Here today with me, my name is Martha, for the people that haven't heard me before. With me here, I have Stefan, I have Abby, Hello. and our guest today, which is Luis Pellegrino. Uh, he is the co-founder of Jothi Vita. This is a holistic wellness center in Hollywood, South Florida. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Okay, great. So for the people that were uh, waiting for our show last uh, Friday, uh, we had to put a replay on. Um, we have too many positive energy and too many crystals in our store, and actually we're having a horrible storm, thunderstorm, and we had to cancel the show. So we have a, a replay from our show, but now we are live and we're so excited. We have um, many current topics. Our topic today is depression, and one of the news that been going around um, everywhere on the internet, TV, uh, media. Um, Stefan, bring bring it on. I don't want to say it everything by myself. Sure. Um, well, uh, everyone, of course, knows about Robin Williams. Very sad, uh, you know, story uh, of a person so successful, so loved by everyone, had so many things going for him you know, so much success. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it, you know, depression can strike anyone exactly. on this planet. It exactly. strikes everyone at some point, you know, and so everyone needs to be aware of it, um, how to deal with it, um, how to get help. Exactly, and this is why we brought this topic today. Um, because there's so many information going on right now and we've seen this is one of many issues with people that are living um, right now and depression it's something that people have always looked into it as a more uh, health you know issue yeah. but we you know we want to address the topic today as spiritual what is the spiritual you know as we believe we're spiritual beings and how that is affecting an energy and how we can overcome and obviously, you know, find happiness. And that's one of our main core values of our Calypso Shah Spiritual Center is bring happiness to everybody in the world if we can reach them all. Um, Luis, I wanted to ask you, um, what do you think depression is so big right now? <laughs> The way we look at depression is we try to take a step back and we try to first put it in context and contrast with the opposite. What is the opposite of depression? Uh, happiness is the opposite of depression. Exactly, yes. Uh, in the case of folks who are you know, in that depressed state, there's probably some form of challenge, life challenge, spiritual challenge to them across maybe compassion, curiosity, and a sense of belonging, uh, at a, either at a physical level or at a spiritual level. Uh, People who are probably you know, in the same category as, as like the late Robin Williams may have really suffered from not being able to live in the present moment and was so much more in the future, thinking about the future. That's, that's an excellent explanation because a lot of that's what many people are dealing right now. You're either living in the past. Exactly. Or you know, your feelings are either in the past or in the future and not just living the daily tale. You know, what is happening to you right now, and you're not probably appreciating it. Great. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk, uh, people are seeing us right now, we don't have Calypso today, and one of her theories about depression right now 
is how she feels um, as a past life philosophy is a condensation of sadness. When you are depressed, you're sad. So the more sadness you have in your life and you can't overcome that sadness, we have to think about how in life there is uh, many times you're sad, but you can able to overcome the next day you feel better and you come out of it. But then if it never comes out, then this sadness is just a stays, stays until it comes into a depression point. And she believes through many lifetimes people are condensing this sadness and you inherit that into your this present life and you don't know what is coming from, you don't know the answer and what happens then, you're just always feeling depressed but you don't, you don't see the cause. So this is why we tell people, hey, if you're looking uh, to an answer for these feelings that you're having this lifetime and you don't know what it is, you know, Calypso is here to help people and find that answer for you. Look deep into your past life and see how this is, this is, we're looking into finding the cause because as depression is, it's a consequence of something you're feeling. Um, so anybody that is out there and is feeling this way and have um, tried so many different ways to overcome depression and you can't find the answer for it, you know, Calypso is here to help. Our phone number is 561-808-9108 and you can schedule an appointment um, usually anytime during the week and we are here and we're in Boca and we're not moving. Um, let's talk about, we were talking about also more, I want to ask you because uh, Stefan, we're talking about Robin Williams and how he's um, a social personality and how that affects and brings depression in. Okay, yeah. Um, social personality um, in the sense of, I mean, obviously he was a big role model. Yeah, he was a big role model um, to everyone. Um, and, you know, everyone felt like they could relate to him. Exactly. You know, I mean, he, he wore his, I mean, he's an amazing actor, an amazing stand-up comedian. I mean, he, he's a genius. Um, nevertheless, nevertheless, despite genius and all of those amazing qualities, he still couldn't cope for himself. He couldn't find the tools to help himself. Exactly. And you know, and, and you would think someone has everything going for them. So many people love everything in the universe. It still wasn't enough because he didn't have inside him to understand how to, you know, um, grapple, yeah, gra grapple mm -hmm. or whatever with uh, you know getting that help and helping himself. And so many people, I think, end up, you know, they end up like they feel isolated. You know, perhaps almost the more famous you are, the it, more, the more isolated you feel. Um, and and this is a very odd feeling. You know, we were talking about just before we started the show today. It's interesting because I made the comment while we were talking before the start was that I looked at Robin Williams through the optics of either he was performing or he was hiding. Uh, I think he demonstrated a remarkable capacity to live in the present moment while he was entertaining. So much of his entertainment was unscripted. He, yes. he, he actually ad-libbed and did a lot of his routines in the moment. So he had this unique spiritual capacity to actually live in the moment, to take everything that was around him, with him, his audience, the energy, and, and do remarkable things, which I think is a testament of the power of living in the moment. But when he wasn't entertaining, like most celebrities of his stature, the simple act of going out shopping, dining, just mixing in public was very stressful because obviously he was either a paparazzi target or he was a subject of a lot of people who wanted to just meet and greet him and get an autograph and that becomes very stressful and so I think they limit their opportunities to mix the way you and I take it for granted and I think those are the moments where his ability to live in the present moment became diminished and that's when he's anchored in memory. You make the mention about sadness, whether the sadness was inherited from a, a previous soul or something that combines and works on him today in the present moment. But you know, we have a remarkable nervous system. It's the most evolved nervous system on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And it is a two-edged sword because while it has the ability to process thousands of interrupts every moment and allows us to do so many things at one breath, uh, it, 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 95 to 99% of your thinking is either in memory or anticipation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yes, and and I wanted to bring more about the social pressure because I think not only just famous people have that, but everybody now has it. Now we have all the social media that Abby knows more than we, he's younger, <laughs> so he can get us a better insight. But you know, we have that pressure where people are seeing us everywhere on, all the time. We were talking about 50, I mean 100 years ago, you were in a t small town, something happened to you, people didn't like you anymore, you can just move out. Nobody knew you in this other place, but now we have social media. Everybody knows where you are. Uh, everybody's connected to Facebook, Twitter. Even if you don't want to be caught, there is some crazy video, something that people caught you doing, and it's out there. And then you're just being judged for so many people. And as such, it's a lot of pressure. Even communication, I think, helps everybody to be connected. And I guess that was our main goal as human beings, being more connected, because that's what we like to do. But then it becomes a lot of pressure, you yeah, know. For sure, connecting and also, you know, being um, having having that social media aspect is also a disconnect from um, the actual living of your life and and being in a connected state, person to person. Exactly. So that everything is always online, and you are not, you know, you, you can't be yourself. You have to show everyone that everything's okay all the time. Exactly. That's like a big thing about social media. Yes. You know, but that's 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 your life there, but that's not really what you're going through. Exactly, and you always have to show a happy face, even though if you're not feeling that way, because you want to show people you're okay, you're fine, you can deal with things, and you can just show that negative, because it comes back to you, and I think more when you are a person um, that are leaving out of what people say to you. You know, if you're an actor, you want everybody wants to see that you are a great person, so you have more contracts, you have more movies going on for you. If you're the grunge, nobody wants to hire you, yeah. or you have a bad publicity with media. So I think that's a lot of pressure right there. Something we were talking about before with Abby, remember yeah. all the texting now with all these young people. There. All these young people. Yeah. Yes, we don't, you know, I mean, I know my mom texts all the time, but you know, the thing is we're losing contact, as you say, like face-to-face yeah. -face yeah. contact. So you are not feeling the energy. Uh, you're, we're losing all this that we think now with media is gonna, you know, you're more connected to people, but it's more information, but it's really not spiritual and energy-wise. So even though people are giving you a good text, text, you know, helping you, maybe you're feeling bad, people say, don't worry, you're gonna, it's never as the same as having the person face-to-face -face yeah, and giving you. Yeah, it's also easier to you take it to a negative place, you know, often someone will send exactly. you something, you know, neutral or arbitrary, and you'll take it the wrong way, you know, it's, it's much easier to, have negative emotions and feelings toward a communication without that inflection and the personality of it behind it. I think yeah. so too. I mean, one of the things that really enhances the whole ability to be spiritual is almost in direct opposition to the social media. Social media mm -hmm. is about being hurt, mm -hmm. and it's really not about listening. It's about everybody making a position, and unfortunately, the anonymity of some of these social f platforms gives people this opportunity to have irresponsible communication. You know, responsible communication is when you're a sender, I know who you are, I am the receiver, I obviously know who I am. That's a responsible communication. We actually have two people who are making a conscious decision to have an exchange uh, and have volunteered together to have that exchange. You know, the anonymity right now with people creating these surnames and these aliases and, and oh, yeah. writing sure. things Definitely. on the internet that they are not responsible for. They're hiding from the responsibility of their own statements, which many times are very caustic and very toxic and exactly. really can undermine the spirituality of what would have been a much broader, more robust relationship if it could be real time, if it could be interactive. As we're talking, you know, most of the, uh, most of the communication today does have uh, that, that impersonal distance to it. I think it's a great point, and I think we have to talk more on our next segment. Right now, we have to go for a commercial, so thank you for everybody who's listening right now. Book Us All Radio Show will be just right back. At Calypso Shaw Spiritual Center, learn how your past lives are affecting your present experience in this planet. Calypso will read your past life's experiences and help you overcome personal issues, grow spiritually, and find inner peace. Call to schedule an appointment at 561-808-9108. Service provided by Calypso Shah Spiritual Center, 
800-998-9108. With a nationwide knowledge in the real estate market, Stefan Statlander will give you the best tools available in the market to make that real estate transaction a breeze. Buying, selling, renting, personal or commercial. Stefan is a broker associate and has the experience and reliability you have been looking for. Brokerage with Stateland Brown, LLC. Call to set up an appointment at 561-572-1911. Our community is growing every day. And our show streams through iHeartRadio to any place in the world. Don't lose the opportunity to advertise during our show. Call at 561 808 9108. Hello, everybody. This is Boca Soul Radio Show. And for the people that haven't heard us before, our website is bocasoulcenter.com. Um, anybody that is hearing us on the radio and want to see how we look like and go back into our archive and see our past shows and see our topics, please go into our website again, www.bocasoulcenter.com. Click on the tab that says radio. You can also stream us live. So if you're in front of your computer right now, you just go to our website and you can see us there. Check us out. Check us out see the way we look and um, also for the people that are here in Boca or South Florida that want to visit our location we are at 6885 Southwest 8, 18th Street Boca Raton Florida 33433 you can also Google Calypso Sha you can uh, find us there on the Google Maps um, also our location right now uh, the people haven't heard about uh, Calypso Shah Center. It's our temporary location. In a couple of months, we're going to have our big, big place where we can have much more services to our community. Uh, we have some offers today. So if you have come here for Calypso and you already have a session and you refer two people, you can have one extra session for free. Um, that's everybody who's interested for Calypso having a past life reading. Uh, this reading helps a lot of people with all different issues. Today we're talking about uh, depression. So uh, for us, it's very important to bring our word out and to help people find happiness and fulfill their dreams. And this is what we're here for. Today we're talking about depression. We're talking about the causes from them. We have this big example today that is the news that's been going on around the last couple of weeks. And we're trying to figure it out what's going on out there, why people are depressed. And we have talked about many different causes. One of the things uh, we were talking about before preparing the show was the lack of exercise. Mm. Your input, Stefan, about this, what do you think? Well, um, I think exercise is very important. Um, you know, for myself, I'm an energetic person and we, we tend to, we get into inertia. Uh, unfortunately, this is human nature. You know, some of us, not all of us are obsessed about things and so it's not easy to get into regular habits about exercise. I know like in my own center, I have like three pools and I have a membership with the Y. Does that mean that I'm doing it all the time? Unfortunately, no. So, um, so I think you really have to, um, you know, get, get your allies so to speak that will help you to succeed in your plan if you and make it fun so you have to you know take an approach where you know that mind body and spirit thing um, you incorporate that into it being fun and having your allies to help you to uh, to succeed um, that's great I want to ask Luis about how do you connect your body mind and spirit so you can overcome depression. How do you guys do it at the Jyoti Vita? At Jyoti Vita, so uh, we start by actually working with clients to understand what's called the dosha. The dosha is really kind of that constitution, the mind, body, spirit constitution, which is derived by your particular makeup of the five elements. The five elements are fire, water, air, ether, and earth. And depending on how you profile, you'll actually go through a set of questions, and the results of those questions will kind of take us down to a point where we'll know you're 
what your dosha is. Now, with that, in, with that baseline information, we're able to now to begin the process of having a much more rich conversation with you to learn what's going on at the mind level, what's going on at the body level, and equally important, perhaps most important, the thing that's very, very much ignored by Western approaches is what's going on at the spiritual level. Exactly. I think that's the most important. And I think that's an Ayurvedic approach into It is very much wellness. an Ayurvedic approach. Yes. Uh, you know, we are, we are really inspired by the Deepak Chopra Center. Uh, my wife, Lucero, really is sort of the brainchild of Jyoti Vita, is a, is a student of Deepak and has spent many years studying with him, his, his late partner, David Simon. Uh, wow. and has made numerous trips to India with him to really kind of dig well beyond what most people would actually spend time learning. Uh, and she's brought that back. And she, every year she actually takes a group of our clients to India. They wow. came back this past November. Uh, and it was a really a profound experience for the attendees because they got to see the connection. They got to see the origins of uh, Ayurveda, which comes from the state of Kerala. Uh, and for us, quite frankly, as an Ayurvedic practitioner, it gives us an opportunity to benchmark our services. You know, we really do pride ourselves on being authentic Ayurvedic service providers, mm -hmm. and the best way to sort of confirm that is to return back to the origin, to go undergo the treatments there locally, and then see and compare for yourself how are you delivering these same experiences to your customers and clients as a way to help them rebalance their mind, body, and spirit. Because the personal touch, the personal treatments, the yoga, the meditation, the diets, all of those collectively come together to help reorient people who have got a dosha imbalance. That's, that's mm. excellent. And one of the things that like you were saying about is how we're going back to the origins because Ayurvedic medicine has like 5,000 years yes. of history. And now our new, new way, which is the last 100 years with this new medicine. And uh, I wanted to bring this just because we see facts that depression is higher on industrialized countries. So we see people, other countries that have this, you know, as you say, go back to the origin, this older technique suffer less from depression. So it's like, okay, what are we doing wrong right now that before people were not suffering from these things as it is happening today, much more scale. Obviously right now we have metrics what people didn't have before to measure statistics in between countries. Um, but we see one of the things we were talking about before, which is lack of exercise. Back in the days, people have to walk to work or ride a horse. Even just doing that, you're doing exercise. And now you just sit there in your car, drive home, drive to your work. And as you say, we have gym memberships. You have your gym downstairs. You have all these machines you buy online to do exercise, and you don't do them because you don't have time. You know, maybe maybe the future will be a car that you have to pedal or something, so you push yourself into doing some exercise. Uh, I want to ask Abby. We were yeah. talking about how industrialized countries and what's going on with our health and our eating disorders. Right. Yeah, yeah, eating eating's very big. Um, you know, water is really important. I was discussing with uh, Sandra, our our very own Ayurvedic practitioner. Um, she was telling me about you know. Really, water is an energy conductor, and you know we're mostly made of water. And filling and filling our body with pure sources um, and consistently is, is very important for staying balanced and um, and not falling into sadness. Um, it was interesting what you're saying before about um, other countries, and that I definitely uh, heard heard statistics that in America we have like the largest population of people who are unsatisfied with their lives, who are exactly. unhappy. And depressed, um, and yes. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously there's a lot of factors that come into that. Um, um, you know, one of, I think one of the basic ones is that we spend a lot of our time, uh, you know, either at our desk, working um, in an office space or in our houses. Um, you know, exercise comes into play there. Um, one of the other things I think is interesting is, you know, just oxygenation in general, you know, being in a building. Um, being in a place where, you know, the air is not necessarily so pure. Um, Everything is recycled now. Yeah, and more recycled. here when you have AC or heat all the time and you're trying to keep that air inside yeah. and you're just not having oxygen. So right. obviously it affects the way you feel yeah. and it's not helping if you're, um, you know, going through depression. Yeah, I wanted to, yeah. Well, I, and, and to build on what both of you are saying as yeah. it relates to why in the industrial world we seem to struggle with this this problem of depression. I mean, 
the seven spiritual laws of success, which is one of the things I was hoping to be able to broach in this conversation, is the tool, is the process that we really put forward to help folks who live in the world where we work a lot, where we have very, very solid attachments. We work because we have desires. Those desires sometimes are fixed to attachments. Mm -hmm. And those attachments become very rigid and very inflexible. And when obstacles get in the way of your achieving those outcomes, things happen. And usually they're not good things that happen. And the seven spiritual laws is a very, very specific set of steps. It's, it's seven laws because there are seven days of the week. You get a chance to practice this within the context of a Sunday through Saturday rhythm. Mm -hmm. And the, each law is progressive. You actually begin on one rung on Sunday, which is the first of the seven days. You conclude on Saturday with the law of Dharma. So, and there are seven laws, the law of pure potentiality for Sunday, the law of giving for Monday, the law of karma for Tuesday, the law of least effort for Wednesday, the law of intention and desire for Thursday, today, the law of detachment, very powerful. And that's nice. at the root, I think, of a lot of our dissatisfaction mm -hmm. and the low quality of life is we're overly attached to outcomes that mean nothing. They're really rooted in anchors of the past, the maps that we have guided ourselves through who have been given to us by others. They're not our own maps. Mm -hmm. We're simply following the course that people have asked us to follow. And tomorrow, all of this comes together with what is my purpose? Why is my talent? Why am I, you know, how do I serve, which is the law of Dharma? And, and you know what, I, I want to rephrase this also when we're talking about industrialized countries, how when you, the meaning of life changes. Because when we go to an undeveloped country, the meaning of life is, you know, you're just barely getting your essentials. You know, to you're survive. to survive, you're going, you have to, and once you're an industrialized country, you know, the government is helping you out. You don't, you know, you have that safety around you. And then your, your basic ne needs are fulfilled. And then you think about, okay, thousands of years, my spirit has been struggling to be alive. You know, it was very hard. But now people are living much longer. We have better health. And then so what I'm doing with my life, I don't, okay, if I don't work still, I have a place to sleep. Still, I have food to eat. So what is my purpose? And I think now in this time, it's been you know thousands of years, we're coming into a point, okay, life, I don't have to deal with these struggles every day, so what is supposed to be my purpose in life? Yeah. And that's, um, that's you know one of the reasons I think depression is also big in this side of the world. Um, one of the topics we were talking about before we uh, wanted to see, because this is the spiritual part, is how eating meat in industrialized countries also, uh, we believe it's a part of depression, not because of eating, I mean, you know, just eating animals. Yeah, eating habits, the way eating we habits. eat. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we, we tend to think that animals are the, our main source of protein, or that's the only source of protein that we can, exactly. that, you know, that we can get. Um, you know, we eat a lot of processed foods, a lot of things that come in bags, and, you know, it's not necessarily the best for us. You exactly. Know, from a spiritual standpoint, you know, we can talk about the energy of the animals and the way that they're kept. Um, they're being mistreated. They're, they're being, being mistreated. I mean, the, the plants themselves, genetically modified. Um, exactly. But, uh, and yeah, it's unfortunate. And, and as Calypso was saying before, you know, all these animals are being brought and they're being sad and they're having anxiety and they're just mistreated. And then as we eat this food, you know, it coming into your system as energy, as sad energy coming into you. So you are also getting this energy that is, you are not, it's not coming within you, but you're putting it into yourself. So we have to go for a small break right now. Thank you for listening to us. I'll be right back here at Boca Soul Radio Show. <laughs> Calypso's Shaw Spiritual Center. Learn how your past lives are affecting your present experience in this planet. Calypso will read your past lives experiences and help you overcome personal issues, grow spiritually, and find inner peace. Call to schedule an appointment at 561-808-9108. Service provided by Calypso Shaw Spiritual Center, 561 Eight zero eight nine one zero eight. With a nationwide knowledge in the real estate market, Stefan Statlander will give you the best tools available in the market to make that real estate transaction a breeze. Buying, selling, renting, personal or commercial, 
Stefan is a broker associate and has the experience and reliability you have been looking for. Brokerage with Stateland Brown, LLC. Call to set up an appointment at 561-572-1911. Our community is growing every day. And our show streams through iHeartRadio to any place in the world. Don't lose the opportunity to advertise during our show. Call at 561-808-9108. Welcome, everybody. We are here at Boca Soul Radio Show, and we're just on half of our radio show, and it's actually lightened today, as they did a week ago where we have to cancel the show so hopefully we don't have to do that today. Uh, Stefan, remind the audience what happened us a week ago. Well, uh, yeah, it was um, it was very dramatic. Um, you know, uh, we, we as we're getting into the show, everyone's sitting and things were about to go live and I mean there was the most incredible lightning storm that was striking the lake and then, you know, we were lit up kind of like a, I don't know, like a Christmas tree, so like something. Um, Strike us on the building, and then we smell all these burning. Yeah, I mean. It was coming right through the building. It was it, the it kept, I don't know what was happening. It, was li it kept striking the building repeatedly until we shut down. At that point, it stopped. I know. So, Apocalypse, we have too many crystals here. We're bringing all this energy. It's too much so for, it was for Boca, for South Florida, and all this lightning. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and it was kind of, I think... It was sort of like that, um, the Tesla, the Tesla effect. <laughs> um, anyway. We're inside the cage, Tesla? No, that's not. Yeah, well, the, te the Tesla is when you have all this electrical stuff and it, it has a relationship with the environment and then the, the electricity starts to arc. And so I, I think, think that, that, I think really that was happening. Um, you know, or whatever you want to think uh, spiritually. Um, of course, and now that we have the radio show here at Boca Soul. Uh, and our center, uh, Calypso Sha Spiritual Center. Uh, I want to tell the people that when it's not raining and lightning, they can come over and be part of our audience here at our location, which is 6885 Southwest, uh, Southwest 18th Street here in Boca, our zip code 33433. You can also Google us in Google Maps, um, Calypso Sha. Uh, you can find us there. Uh, we are in the cross and in between Power line on Southwest 18. We are south part of Boca Raton, Florida. And don't forget to watch us live on our website. On, yes. Uh, yeah, on, 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 at the BocaSoulCenter.com. And, right. and since we are companion organizations where we have a little bit of space, geographic space between us, uh, Jyoti Vita, Ayurvedic Spa and Wellbeing Center uh, is actually located in historic downtown Hollywood on 500 uh, North Federal Highway, uh, just uh, two blocks north of the famous Hollywood Young Circle. And uh, our site is uh, www.jotivita, J-O-T-H-I-V-I-T-A dot com. And you can find us on Facebook, TripAdvisor, and numerous other sort of uh, uh, sources in that category. Yes. Uh, why don't you tell the audience about the name? How do you came up with the name of your company? Because I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful name. Uh, I'll give my wife, Lucero, a lot of credit. We spent hours and hours debating many, many different names. Uh, but my wife's name is Luz, which is light. Uh, Jyoti, the, the first part of Jyoti Vita, J-O-T-H-I, is a Sanskrit word meaning light as well. Many of you probably have Latin backgrounds, uh, know that Vita means life. Mm -hmm. So collectively, what we represent in the word Jyoti Vita is the light of life. And our business, Jyoti Vita, is tagged with the lighting your path to wellness. So uh, it all just worked. It just seemed to work. Lucero, light, the name of the business, the actual emphasis that we're putting on wellness, and giving people the awareness to see the path. Exactly. Because that's, that's really what it's about. I, if, if I put the light over here, if I put the light over there, it doesn't help. My, our light is really helping people increase their own self-awareness, their personal awareness, so that they can see that path in front of them. Yes, and I, I want you, if you can go back into the seven spiritual laws of success. I think it's a very important to people. If people haven't heard us before, but they just tune in into our station, um, how do they work and how people can benefit from this? It's interesting because Stefan was talking about earlier the whole working out 
and I'm going to use this to, I'm going to make, it's, it'll make sense here in a second, about choices and, and conscious choice making, which is one of the seven laws. That's, I'll get to that in a second. But what we, we've grounded most of our therapies and our, and our approach to wellness inside of these seven spiritual laws because they really are very well targeted at people who live the crazy lives that we live here in our Western industrial society, sure. society where they're overtaken by their commitments on a professional level, they're overtaken by the families that they're supporting and all the other uh, extraneous things that come into their life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we, me we mentioned earlier that we have this capacity to process interrupts at a remarkable rate. And what the seven spiritual laws do is they kind of take us back for a second and give us the opportunity to sort of build back into our modality this concept of self-awareness, personal awareness. And as you go through each of the laws, what you're gaining is on Sunday, you're gaining this awareness that you're part of something big, the whole pure potentiality. On Monday, you're gaining the insight that the universe has got a perfect accounting system. So this pay it forward concept is a brilliant idea. Whenever you give, the universe keeps track of that credit and sooner or later it will manifest back to you in a new and remarkable way. Uh, on Tuesday, it's about conscious choice making and of being very aware of your choices and knowing that choices made from the head are made from the ego, choices made from the heart are made from the soul. And sometimes you have a struggle between those. And as long as you're aware that those two interests are competing with each other, if you make a head choice, that's fine because you make it in the context of understanding what was going on in the heart. But to the degree that most of your choices can be grounded in what's coming from your heart, you'll probably make better choices for yourself and those affected by the choice. Wednesday's brilliant. We're, we're talking about that emotional emotional uh, yeah, that, decisions. That right, because as highly advanced beings, we are given this power to choose. And so what we've done is we've subordinated a lot of that conscious decision making to reflex responses. Mm -hmm. If I tell mm -hmm. Stefan, I love this shirt, whether he says it or not, he's flattered. Exactly, yes. All right, if mm -hmm. I say, Stefan, this is, who, who, who designed this shirt? Who put this thing together? Chances are he may be offended. Mm -hmm. In both mm -hmm. cases, the flattery or the being offended is a choice, but it was subordinated to a reflex. Yes, mm -hmm. and we've been talking Very about conscious. this for a long time here, and it's mm -hmm. how sometimes we feel like in this society people are taking any comment a negative instead of taking it positively. positively. And we're talking about, uh, remember, how you have people call you, you have a name they call you when you were a kid, and it becomes something people are making fun of you, but in different cultures, you have nicknames all the time, and even though it means fat or skinny or big or whatever it is, you don't feel it's an insult. We've been talking about this before, but it's how, the co how you perceive on it. If somebody, you know, you tell me, oh no, put them a nickname, and that is it's just the quality of the person, so you can take it either positive for yourself, or you can take it negative. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a great point right there. Sure, sure. Uh, Wednesday is about the, least, the law of least effort. Sometimes we over-engineer our response. Sometimes we try so hard to push the square peg through a round hole. Grass doesn't try to grow. Birds don't try to fly. Many times we over-engineer our responses, so there's a good reading on that. Thursday is a, is a complex one because it sets up this contrast between desire, which we all think and have in our lives, and intention. And the, and the tension between those two, because desire really is a tension with attachment, right? Yes. And, and, does, and intention is, has the best of desire, that is, I want something, but I am not wed to a particular outcome. I intend to do this, but I'm not going to be so hard-coded. I, I intend to do it, and it's going to look like whatever specific vision I have. Today is the law of detachment, which basically builds on what we started yesterday. It, and it's good because it's Friday. You kind of detach of what you're doing all the week. You detach from work, <laughs> and then yeah. you go on the weekend. So I like that for Friday. I think it matches mm -hmm. perfectly. Yeah, yeah well, on Friday, today's law is about turning around all of your life lessons, where we, told, we were told to be goal-oriented, to be very structured, uh, and that's how we were raised. This yeah. is completely 180 degrees. This says let uncertainty become a part of your daily lifestyle. Be comfortable with uncertainty. Don't fear it. In fact, the more uncertain you feel, that means you are limit, you're, you're limitless in terms of accepting possibilities because when you become so wed 
to only this choice or that choice, you're blind to every other possibility that can manifest. And there is no experiences. And, and we think about in life, you have, you're here in planet Earth to experience and learn. Exactly. And if you're so blocked and only seeing one path, you are not able to experience and your soul cannot learn. So next, as we talk about with Calypso, so you go to your next lifetime and you have to relearn what you haven't learned because you're always just focused on one path. Right. And I think it's very important because uh, now with society, you want to control everything. We have all these technological devices. You can control time, you can control this, this and that. And when it's something unexpected, it's like, what's happening? And it, you become frustrated and you become angry. So having that ability to tell people, it's okay to have choices, open up, just let things come. Yeah, yeah to, be the, you know, to be defenselessness, I mean, that's a, hor that's a hard word for me to put together, but to practice defenselessness, don't be so preoccupied with defending your point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, be open, don't even intervene, don't even talk sometimes, and just let it soak in. And tomorrow it comes to its apex. Tomorrow's hopefully the six previous days have given you insight and perspective to continue thinking about what is my talent, what is my service. And you know what? You have good weeks and you have bad weeks. And the beauty of this, this, this cadence is that every Sunday you get to start it all over again. It's awesome. It's yeah. great because some people feel like you have one choice and then you know how you're going to get out. If you think it about as a cycle that you can start all over again, it's kind of like forgive. Forgive yourself, forgive everyone around, and start from zero again, right. and you can redo it again. I like that idea, and that reminds me, you know, for moms out there, uh, you kind of like have a kid, and you have a certain way to have, to, you know, to, to teach them and be a mom, and then when you have a second child, you, have, you can do it again, and you can re-change. So every time you're having these cycles, I mean, this is part of what it is in Earth. You know, we have cycles everywhere. In nature, you know, the universe moves around and we should just take advantage of this so we can start and reset ourselves and we start in a new path All you know right. it's great now i know i know you guys are fans of meditation I mean, yes okay mm -hmm. uh, so so sort of round out and sort of close on this seven spiritual laws we do open meditation during the week we do it largely for the benefit of the students that we graduate because they go through the chopra primordial sound meditation workshop and they leave with obviously the best of intentions to go home to practice twice a day to do all the things they know are the right thing to do and then of course they're overtaken by life yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> you know the spouse the kids the pets the they crazy so we we open up our center uh, every day at 6 p.m to do just an open gratis meditation. Do you have it every day? We have it Tuesday through Friday. Oh, Tuesday awesome. Tuesday through Friday. Great. So, and that's uh, it's an opportunity for our, both our students and people who know nothing about meditation mm -hmm. to come in and at least kind of take a bite of the apple because in that 30 minutes, it's amazing when I see the the after effect. I can see the tension in their face of at course. the start of it of and I can see this sort of this melting of the, the wrinkles melt, the frown lines melt. Everything seems and they're very sort of in bliss. Of course, and I think it's great because we were talking about this show about cause of depression, and now we're talking about how to overcome depression. So one of the big, you know, is not only lack of exercise to your body, but it's also exercise to your mind. When you're doing meditation, it's kind of like you're training your mind. You're using that muscle and yeah, help you relax. Like the opposite. You're, you're over-exercising your mind. Yes. You know, and in meditating, you kind of give it that, that, that time to relax and, you know, open up and even almost you know, be in the mystery of life, you know, uncertain, you know, letting go of your thoughts, you know, you, we're, we're very much attached to our thoughts and, um, you know, our thoughts guide us. Exactly. Well, uh, for, for, I'm sorry. We have to go for a small break right now and we'll be right back here at Boca Soul Radio Show. Thanks for joining us. At Calypso Shaw Spiritual Center, learn how your past lives are affecting your present experience in this planet. Calypso will read your past life's experiences and help you overcome personal issues, grow spiritually, and find inner peace. Call to schedule an appointment at 561-808-9108. Service provided by Calypso Shaw Spiritual Center, 561 Eight zero eight nine one zero eight. With a nationwide knowledge in the real estate market, Stefan Statlander will give you the best tools available in the market to make that real estate transaction a breeze. Buying, selling, renting, personal or commercial, 
Stefan is a broker associate and has the experience and reliability you have been looking for. Brokerage with Stateland Brown, LLC. Call to set up an appointment at 561-572-1911. Our community is growing every day. And our show streams to iHeartRadio to any place in the world. Don't lose the opportunity to advertise during our show. Call at 561-808-9108. Welcome back to Boca Soul. Radio show. Live radio show. You can um, watch us live on our website at bocasoulcenter.com. Um, our phone number is 561-808-9108. And um, what's our address? 6885 Northwest. South, Southwest 18th. Southwest 18th. Boca Raton. Boca Raton. We're here in the intersection of uh, Power Line and Southwest 18. We're in right. the south central area of Boca Raton. And today we're talking about depression. And all the people that are hearing us right now, we want to give just a few quick tips for people that are maybe not feeling depressed but are feeling sad. And we want to bring good energy. There is many things that you can do to help yourself. So, Abby, tell us more about essential oils and how essential we can... Essential oils, yeah. Yes. So, essential oils and aromatherapy are a great way to, um, you know, pep up your mind, get yourself, you know, flowing. Also, staying happy. We have... Um, the Young Living line uh, here at um, here at Center, the, the, the if spiritual if center. Yes, um, we are blasting some of this joy today with our little machine. It like fogs us up, and <laughs> um, and uh, that you know that gives us joy. If you're looking for oils and things, you know we're here. Um, we can help you, and we, um, we can advise advise you how to which oil is best for you and what you're using. We have these blends which. Um, Abby told about Joy, which has a mix of... Yeah, we have bergamot exactly. in it. Exactly. Um, elang, elang, rose, jasmine, lavender, and it's all, it's all mixed in together. It's a wonderful uh, mix because it brings all the good benefits of these oils, which are very uplifting for the spirit. And if people that have, haven't thought about using aromatherapy to help their emotions, you just think about when you go into a place and it smells horrible. How do you feel? Horrible. When you come into a place and you smell these wonderful, not only essential oils, but just flowers or just the perfume, your spirit gets uplifted. It just goes right. It's a very fast mechanism from a smell going into your brain. Some people smell something and have a memory connected to the smell. And you kind of like m remember something that happened to you or a place you were when you were y uh, young, a kid. Or a place maybe you were in love or with somebody. Smells are, are very, very fast connection to your brains. And very I want nice. to yes, I want to bring some topics from Feng Shui. This is always uh, the last part of our show. Uh, so connected to depression, which cures can you do in your house? So if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling depressed, the first thing you have to do so is clean up your house. Open those windows. Let light come into your house. That's the first thing. So if you think about people that are depressed, they're usually hiding in their bed, closing. Mm -hmm. They want darkness. Uh, if you do that, you're just not going to get out of that um, emotional situation. So you just have to come out. Let the sun help yeah, you. That's so great. Yeah, I have here, I see that yellow is associated with joy and happiness. Exactly. And orange is a stimulant, and that's the sun. I mean, that's what it's there to do. I mean, we don't think about these things consciously, but there are people who do. <laughs> exactly, and feng shui has been there for thousands of years, so they have already proven these um, theories. So get yellow within you, uh, start dressing up with yellow, light colors, yeah, oranges, and for your house is great, as I said before, open those windows. If there is places, maybe your bedroom is too dark, remember you can just always bring a lamp and just those dark corners that are not appealing to you, just bring a, a lamp in it. Um, if you think about a lot of fancy and expensive houses, they have these big chandeliers once you come into the doorway. So this brings a lot of good energy and it actually it's, uh, brings the, like let's say, diverse the energy of the house and brings us bringing light throughout your house. It brings out the chi and arranges it and makes you have more equally, you know, the equilibrium of, of right. this energy. Right. Um, very important that we were talking about industrialized countries before mm -hmm. and the cause of depression. 
is the electricity outlets. So please, if you're sleeping and you have an electric outlet um, really? nearby your head, uh, please mo move your bed. That's move the bed. Exactly. So it shouldn't be near the outlet. Exactly, oh, wow, because that, that is bringing you all this electromagnetic energy beside mm -hmm. your head, and maybe that's why you're just feeling depressed and you don't know why. Well, here's an interesting point, actually. I, I for example, have an adjustable bed that is electric. And uh, huh. it's been mentioned to me by practitioners that um, unplug it. Unplug that because you're, you're sleeping with that electromagnetic current Co yes. thing yes. all night long yes wow. and as they say also i mean we don't have this problem in florida but in the northeast people that have electric blankets no feng shui for this yeah. <laughs> please unplug it i mean i know it's cold put it in once you're gonna go in bed just yeah, unplug water it bottle, you know they're more so natural, they're more natural yeah. ways and so after you've got your house clean you've got it aromatherapy at work Two minutes. you've exactly. got the light and everything in there the last thing that you really want to do now is is take time to prepare the right meal mm. oh um, excellent and you know again one of the advantages of knowing what your dosha is is that with that we know that doshas that are pitta there's a lot of fire in them so there's a certain combination of foods that are going to work better for them than others what I what I love about Ayurveda quite frankly is it's not hard-coded there are no rigid do's and don'ts uh, what there are, there are conscious choices that on balance, if I'm going to give you this option or this option, chances are this one's going to work better for you. And so we have good recommendations with respect to fruits, vegetables, and grains that can uh, help balance your dosha. That, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, Louis, and on one last note for, for, yeah, for things you can eat, you know, some things that are, you know, keep us happy are like cloves and cinnamon and nutmeg. You know, those are like fun things. They don't necessarily, you don't have to, you know, always put sugar in donuts and other things, but there are healthy ways to incorporate spices. Um, uh, and um, an another really interesting one is like Chinese ginseng, which is called Shanka Pushpi. <laughs> I, I really like to say that. Um, and it's really good for your brain, and uh, it also one happens minute. to help with well, menstruation minute. cramps. That's great, and thank you. I want to thank, before we go, to Luis Pellegrino to be here, our guest thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you. You brought so many good information yeah, to our show. Stuff. And I, li I like that uh, principle of uncertainty. Yep. Well, I that was a good one. I enjoyed the company. I enjoyed the conversation. It's a delight. I look forward to uh, continuing to mix with you all. Thank yeah, you so absolutely. much. Thank you. Yeah. Join us here every Thank you for Friday. joining us. Yes. Every Friday, we'll be, we air live um, at the Boca Soul Center dot com, And we're also on um, 1447 AM. Yes, that's yep. on our radio station. So thank you so much for listening to us. Uh, we love to have you here at our center. Please come. We have our radio show every Friday. You can just call us 561-808-9108 and just We'd do... we to have you in the live audience as yes. well. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to Boca Soul, featuring Calypso, brought to you by the Calypso Shaw Spiritual Center in Boca Raton, specializing in past lives readings, astrology, plus energy healing, event planning, and more. Calypso Spiritual Center, where you discover the beauty of your soul. Call 561-808-9180 to make your appointment. And tune in again next week for more Boca Solo.